Hello and welcome to the Voice of Todd. I'm Tom, and today I want to talk about The Expanse, Season 5, Episode 8, Hard Vacuum. But first, I should probably open up with an apology. I like to get these out on the day that the episode drops. Uh, that was yesterday, unfortunately. I had quite a few things going on at IRL. Um, so it's Thursday, I'm a day late, I am really sorry. Uh, hopefully it won't happen again. Uh, it was just a trying day yesterday. Um, but let's talk about the latest episode of The Expanse. Uh, as always, um, my opening gambit of, of trying to get you guys to, to join in. Um, if you enjoy this or any of my other content, please do subscribe, hit the like button, throw me some comments, let's have a chat. Um, it makes a huge difference when people interact with these videos. Um, I'm, I am trying to build something with this, uh, especially with, with being in the UK here in lockdown. And it, living on my own, it's quite isolating. Um, so it's really nice to, to talk to you guys and, and see comments and things on the videos. So that's my, my call to, to help me grow and, and support the channel. Uh, everything is appreciated. Uh, I love everything that you guys do. The fact that anybody watches these really just, just makes me just amazed. Because they are pretty messy, I'll be honest. But that's kind of my style, I guess. But anyway, on to the real reason that you've clicked on this. Uh, let's talk about The Expanse. There will be spoilers for this week's episode. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, uh, I know it's been a busy week. There's been a lot going on in the world. Um, but take a break, make a brew, put your feet up, and come back. I'll be here. All caught up? Good. Let's get into it. So we open this episode with a flooded waste that is, I'm guessing, Central America. Uh, Amos and Clarissa are making their way to Baltimore. My first thought was, damn, electric bikes sound really pathetic. Uh, weird, I know, but they're just missing that roar of a real engine. Uh, same with electric cars, I guess. Uh, but they make a quick pit stop, and uh, we get a little bit of dialogue between the two of them. Uh, I love watching Amos and Clarissa. The dynamics of the characters and the chemistry that the actors have is, is just brilliant. It really works for me. Uh, Clarissa seems to be clear of the blockers. Uh, and seemingly having a, a bit of a renewed love of life. Now she's free. Uh, this episode has quite a few moments where the expressions or just the looks on the actors' faces really portray so much. Uh, and the first one I picked up on here was, was this. I think these two had a lot of fun while they were shooting. Um, and as Amos pokes fun at Clarissa eating a protein bar like it's... Or talking about it like it's the best thing in the world. It's these little real moments of, of just humanity that, that really work. I love it when Amos takes the piss. Um, I also think that we're, we've got a decent amount of Clarissa here. Uh, with season three, she's totally consumed by rage. She forces her way onto a UN transport ship to get to James Holden and destroy the Rossi for, for what James Holden and the crew did for or, or against um, her father's name. Uh, yes, yeah, she does stop short in, in fulfilling that path and she does it with her own morals and it's her decision. But after some time in prison we've got a totally different side of her. She's She's kind of come full circle I think. And this is a theme that's happened with quite a few of our characters this season. Specifically the female ones. Um, but I, I think that Clarissa is really starting to see things a little bit more clearly. She's feeling emotions and things a hell of a lot more cleanly. Uh, more keenly, sorry. Um, than I think she did before. And the fact that she's caring for total strangers instead of stuffing acquaintances' bodies in lockers. I think so it proves that. Um, but we, we really get this this setup is showing how much of a mess Earth is. Uh, and Amos and Clarissa, Clarissa are not strong enough as the two of them to, uh, to do anything about it. And I think that's why we're heading to Baltimore so Amos can try and get some reinforcements and find a way to, to at least survive. Um, but Clarissa seems to to know a way up the well. So, 
we'll uh, we'll explore that later on. We get our shot of Marco um, with the Free Navy fleet. Uh, this is the only time we see Marco this episode. Uh, he's mourning Sin, uh, who we lost at the end of, of the last episode. Uh, and Marco is obviously taking out Philip. It's Philip's fault that all of this has happened. Uh, it might just be me. I might be reading too much into things. But I'm pretty sure there was a moment of satisfaction when Marco asked Philip how his mother died. There was a brief flash of something. Uh, Marco is clearly hurting. So is Philip. They've both lost a father figure here. And for Marco, a strong voice of reason in the crew, I think. I don't have a good feeling about the future with Marco. Now that Sin isn't there to, to challenge him. But over to the Chetsamoka, and I'm not going to go too deeply into anything that happens here over the course of the episode, because it's something I feel that, to understand, you need to, to experience uh, yourself. I couldn't do it justice. But can we just give Dominique Tipper all the damn awards already? This episode, I mean last week as well, but this episode just really shows how good of an actress she is. I mean also, you've got to hand it to the, the rest of the crew, the director, the writers. Everything about this show is, is so well done, but damn is Dominique killing it these few episodes. She's amazing, and it's just brutal, and it's heartbreaking, and you really feel it because of how good she can convey this, and obviously the connection that she has to the character. It's so good. But the key takeaway is that Naomi is alive. Barely, but she's alive. She is, however, trapped on the Chetzamoka, which is rigged to blow, and is sending an SOS out specifically for Holden. The trap is primed and Naomi is right in the middle of it. I just this this whole sequence so good. Um, I do want to also big shout out to the makeup team who have done an amazing job with the swelling, the blisters, the general battering that Naomi's taken. Uh, just it's so brutal but it all looks fantastic and so real. Um, really well done there. Went over to Holden Bull and, and Monica. They're checking for signs of the proto molecule within the wreckage of the Zemea. Um There's nothing there. Well, not that the Rosie can pick up. It seems like. Well, I mean, it seems like the proto molecule here has been destroyed, but we all know it isn't that easy, right? Surely. But Holden orders a rendezvous with the Razorback. Uh, Bull clearly isn't into this idea. Um, he's not really up for a fight with Marco, I don't think, with the knowledge that they have. Uh, and he definitely doesn't care for finding Naomi. Bull... This is why I like Bull, because he, he he's very strategic. He looks at the evidence, he looks at the situation, and he says... This is something I can do something about, and this I've got no chance. And he's decided that he has no chance in this situation, especially with somebody like Holden. And it's setting things up quite nicely, I think, between them for the next few episodes. Things are also getting pretty tense with our favourite Pollyann Belter fam. It's, I mean, Carol is probably going to be making things worse anyway, but... There's definitely cracks, and they're definitely widening since they've joined up with Marco in the Free Navy. Uh, we have a, a little Firefly-esque salvage sequence here, um, but Drummer is is not in a good place. She hasn't been all season. Uh, again, another strong female character who is being pulled through the ringer at the minute. Uh, she she isn't fond of having to side with Marco. Clearly, uh, and especially after Ashford's death, um, she's not coping well. And she doesn't really have any other choice. So, she's in a rough spot. 
We then head over to Luna and we get David Pastor, the new UN Secretary General's first address to the people of Earth. Boy, is he good. I'm going to butcher his name. I'm really sorry. Sugith Varahes? He's really good. I'm really sorry I butchered your name. Uh, not that he'll ever see this, <laughs> but I, I'm really sorry. Um, just brilliant. And I also love the little moment, and again, it's that little interplay with the, the cast. Um, the moment when he thanks and credits Ava Sorala and Delgado with the, the response effort. Ava Sorala is clearly not shy of the spotlight, and Delgado looks really uncomfortable. Um, just a nice little moment. Um, but Pastor is... You know, he's starting to grow into the role, which is going to be interesting. Uh, we finally also get uh, our latest look at Baltimore. Episode 2, the city was amazing. Um, it's a mess now. That near future neon vibe that was there, the busy streets, it's just a mess. Uh, and it, it looks like something from Planet of the Apes day after tomorrow it's that kind of devastation as you'd expect but Jesus Amos and Clarissa are taken to Eric who we know from earlier in the season uh, Eric isn't best pleased to see Amos uh, or that he survived uh, I this is a great scene the dialogue is so on point for all three characters I think really good it's just so strong writing this season but just brilliant and also the actors are clearly enjoying themselves um, I think I mentioned it back in episode 3, but Jacob Mundell is excellent. He's a really good find. Again, another newbie this season. Um, these guys find some amazing talent. Uh, he's not an actor that I'd heard of before. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll see him in a lot more stuff because he's a really good talent. Um, and again, it's the little looks between Amos and Clarissa when, when Eric calls Amos Timmy, when uh, Clarissa is talking about a past, when... Jules Pierre Mao is mentioned and Amos shuts Eric down. There's there's so much in this scene. It's really well done. Just absolutely loved it. Um, but the plan is to uh, to go and find a suborbital ship or shuttle um, that potentially Clarissa knows about with the help of a case of tequila if, uh, if Amos gets his way. Uh, it's so good. Um, back on Luna and past is getting it looks like his first briefing from his generals and advisors he after his address to the the planet he wants a plan to bring the might of earth and earth's navy to to bear on marco and, and really tighten his grip and hopefully take the guy down uh, avisrala and delgado have differing opinions on how to do that i feel um, Palace is named as a target due to its allegiance to Marco, but there would be a lot of civilian, civilian casualties. Um, I mean, the, from an Earther's point of view, they are just belters, and all belters seem to be accountable for Marco's crimes, depending on who you ask. We will see if Pasta has the stomach for such drastic actions, and how much stock he has in Avistrala as a voice of reason here I think moving forward it's going to be very interesting but back with Naomi um, those awards better be in the post because she deserves every one of them uh, like I said I'm not gonna go into the details here uh, it, It just shows you how much faith everybody seems to have in, in everybody here. How good these scenes are. They're so well done. They're so well done. This season we've had Avisrala push to breaking point. Um, she's got a distraction now with her new position on the council. But we know very little about what's happened to Arjun. We know her family's safe. The rest of her family's safe. Her, her daughters and grandchildren. But... Arjun's clearly missing. Earth's a mess, which she's taken personally. We also have Drummer, who is so close to the edge right now. And Naomi has just been broken time and time again this season. Just, it's 
brutal just to see the growth of these characters and how good each of them have been and how well the and tight the scripts are just so well done this season it feels like and the rest of the show seasons one to four have been really good and each one has been a, a step up I think in in how good things have been and the money that's put in has, has really been showing but this season is a cut above everything else right now I think that the care that these storylines are, are dealt with as well is clearly on show um, we have some some very strong characters who have been brought to their knees and it's done in a way that that not only do you sympathize but you you also you feel the desperation with them as if you knew them personally back over to our polyam belt fam everybody's on edge and this scene everything erupts intentions just just let loose uh, I do think this scene is a little wonky I think it would be really hard to shoot a scene like this but damn is it it's really well done it, you know, despite my, my feeling of the CGI water um, basically an argument breaks out one of the the crew nudges the other and a tankard of water or a canteen of water um, is nudged and a load of water goes out in, in low G and, and moves around in, in droplets the humour here and, and just the connection that they all have and, and how uh, it, this is a really nicely seen really well done it, their journey as part of drummer's crew and, and family by extension has been a real high point for this series and you really get that feeling of family with them they have that bond and the low G stuff in the show it's very science based the, the way that the story is told is in a very scientific way everything that happens is possible there is maybe thin but there is scientific evidence that proves a lot of these elements um, this is pure well not pure but this is a, a probably 95% science fact show it's not fantasy and it's things like this that really work with with, with well thought out low G sequences and characters that you just love but yeah another, another a really good scene and it was the the feeling of of relief and that moment of relaxation that I think as a viewer I definitely needed after the last sort of episode and and where we're going with other characters in this so that was really well done we then catch up with Alex and Bobby they're still on the hunt for Naomi fuel is running low but Bobby finds the distress signal from the Chetsamoka and they forward that on to Holden who well let's just say all bets are off with Holden now he is not going to stop until he's rescued Naomi because he has to be the white knight regardless of the situation uh, Pastor I think he is settling into his role as, as Secretary General and I think this guy is a little less shy than he appears um, he calls Delgado into his office for a, a very candid chat and Delgado doesn't hold back with his desire to strike the belt I think Abbasrael is going to have a hands full for the next few episodes. Uh, back with uh, Naomi, uh, Alex sends a, a reply to the distress signal. Um, I've not gone into her stuff, but it just further adds to the pressure that she's under. And this whole, from now on, we really get the drasticness of her plan but also how much of an exceptional mechanic she is uh, and we've always seen it but she's just again Naomi's excellent in this she's so good then back with drummer and 
again they're in the middle of another salvage they're salvaging belter ships and it although it's not mentioned with the second one it does feel that these are the people who turned on Marco or who refused his offer and yeah but you you get the vibe that that Carol's going for she's clearly calling the shots she's she doesn't care about the people that she's with only for the cause and that's been clear from the start and, and it just reinforces it here but they pick up on the distress signal and Carol seems to take great pleasure in telling Drummer that Naomi's dead Drummer reacts as you'd expect and her famous temper flares luckily Oksana is quick enough to restrain her before she draws her weapon um, but Drummer storms off the bridge and well I don't think Carol's really going to make many friends um, I do hate seeing Drummer like this again another really strong character who I've fallen in love with um, earlier in the season we we got a little bit of the backstory with Drummer and the bottle of whiskey that she was going to share with, with Ashford It takes the news of Naomi's death that really pushes her over the edge and, and opens the bottle. Um, drummer in the show, she's merged with a, a character called Sam from the books, and I'm, I won't go into it, but Sam and Naomi were very close, and you really get the feeling that, that Naomi and Drummer are close after everything that happened in season three, and and I think this this is a nice little nod to to their relationship and their friendship and, and the characters that Drummer are, seems to be. Um, taking cues from in the books uh, really works for me but but yeah drummers drummers not in a good way uh, we have a final scene with Naomi um, I mean final as in final of the episode not final as in and yeah you know um, I just love how this plays out the emotion the music all of it it really got me really got me just just brilliant um, but we end the episode with Corral and Oksana. Corral is, is maybe not as cold as she makes out. And I, I think she she's realised that Oksana might not be an enemy. Anyway, the, the two are connecting. And the distress signal that's been coming through on the ship uh, from Naomi has changed and the realization of what that could mean seems to have hit Carol. And we end with the distress signal, the changed distress signal playing out. Um, brilliant episode. Brilliant episode. We end with Naomi forcing a chance at potential rescue with Alex and Bobby and Holden Bull and Monica burning headfirst towards Marco's trap on the Chetsamoka. Avis Ferrales seemingly put in a tough spot by Pasta and Delgado's potential new alliance. Um, that's just where I feel it's going. Amos and Clarissa are, are pretty much focused on getting off Earth now, if, if that's possible. And I think Drama is about to explode which could cause all kinds of problems for everybody uh, but we have a beacon which is Naomi's signal we have most of our main crew most of our main characters sorry um, heading that way and I would guess that Marco has a thing or two going through his head about the situation as well really think this is building up to the last two episodes uh, I, I I I love this show I don't think there is a better show there certainly isn't a better show on TV at the moment um, but I don't think there's been anything that's been as good as this in a long time just everything works everything works big shout out to the writers for, and I know that the authors of the book are involved in the show quite heavily but the writers room have just nailed just everything that they were going for here I, I, I love it, the actors, the crew everything is just making this season 
just unmissable. It's an absolute delight to watch so far, and it has been it has been brutal in moments. Um, but I am so excited to see where we go with the last two episodes. I think there's a lot in store, and I, I think it's going to be quite a big season finale. Uh, we do know there's a season six. We're probably looking at December next the, this year now. We're 2021, aren't we? Um, so we're a while away, but I think. I have high hopes and I, I don't think I'll be disappointed whatever happens um, but that leaves us with two weeks and quite a lot of story threads to tie up and then we'll have to find a new show to watch I think I don't know what the viewing figures are like I do hope that people are watching this I hope that people are enjoying the show and, and I hope that there's a solid fan base there um, but anyway what did you think of the episode? Uh, let me know in the comments below uh, I'm really interested to see what your take is and where you think this is going to go with two episodes remaining but as always thank you for watching I'll see you in the next one